It's now my pleasure to introduce Ray Baxter, president of the Payson Meetup Club. He will be sharing his experience with music in the car. Ray is also the president of APC UG, along with it being its treasurer. Ray was born and raised in New York City. His 40 plus year banking career started in back office operations and progressed to marketing and management positions in both New York City and Los Angeles with three different major international financial interest institutions. Ray lives in central Arizona's Rim Country and teaches three computer courses at the Eastern Arizona College Payson campus. Do you have a lot of music discs that you won't play in your newer car, that won't play in your newer car? Ray will show us how we can make use of them still. I will now turn the presentation over to Ray. Please welcome Ray. All right, this is going to, the title of this is uh, Music in the Car or Listening to Music in Your Car. And let's think for a second, how far have we come from the AM radio? There was a time when having an AM radio with station push buttons in your car was so cool. But music in the car certainly from that time period has evolved. Uh, the AM radio brought us to the AM radio, as I said, with push buttons. And then but probably in the early 1960s, uh, the FM radio became much more focused with, with music playing. And then they added an eight track player to that. And then they added a cassette player to that. And then the CD player, of course, then the ones that played multiple discs. Then we had satellite reception. And then the cars came with wired connections. You could take your devices and plug them into the connection of the car and, and hear your music through the, uh, the, the sound system of the automobile. Flash drive connections, and more, most recently, Bluetooth connectivity. So we really have evolved with music listening in the car over the last 60 plus years. Today, the options to music in the car are numerous. Choices include, yes, the AM radio is still there, but uh, even though it's been around for most of these years, oh, so many years, it really has moved on from primarily music to for now primarily talk radio. Uh, the FM radio is still in the car, but this actually could include what's called HD radio. And that offers up to three additional channels on the same frequency. Satellite, uh, Sirius XM satellite radio, 100 channels of music, news, sports, and our compact disc player, which we're talking about today, and that's starting to disappear from new cars, but most of us probably still have a car that has one. And now smartphones, you can connect via either Bluetooth or the wired connection to play streaming as well as songs that might be saved on the phone. And then USB connections uh, with later model cars actually offering connectivity for two flash drives. It's like deja vu all over again. Yes, the above quote is, of course, from famed New York Yankee catcher Yogi Berra. Those close to my age and even younger can recall when the following disappeared from our cars. The A-track player, the cassette player, you don't find them in, in many cars unless they're really old these days. And so now, in addition to the CD player disappearing, even my 2018 model vehicle doesn't even have the simple audio connection anymore. So these are things that are always changing. Now, why don't new cars, most new cars, I should say, have CD players? Well, it's time for new technology to take over because believe it or not, car CD players have been around for more than 25 years. And that we all know it requires the user to have the physical presence of the media, a compact disc, the jewel case. Uh, that's not really necessary with newer technology. And then music CD sales have been declining for the last 15, more than the last 15 years, as younger listeners opt for newer methods to hear their favorite artists and tunes. And the more auto manufacturers have gotten smart, they're now providing this newer technology and they can eliminate the expense of a CD player, which today, unfortunately, for some people has limited appeal. So now you have to decide how you wanna proceed. And there's a few options here. First option is to convert, or the, the term we use is rip, the songs from your existing compact disc collection to MP3 files saved on your computer. So they can be copied to devices 
to play the music in your car. Now, I've always done this from the earliest time I started uh, collecting CDs and had a uh, home computer. I uh, used Windows Media Player to, just so I'd have a backup copy. But I'm amazed that as I talk to people over in, in recent days, how many have not really ever done that with their music? Option two, if you don't want to go to the trouble of ripping all your music CDs, you can choose a streaming service and play the music in your car from your smartphone or even an MP3 player. And this can be done either by Bluetooth or a wired connection in the car. And then actually there is an option three. What's the option three? Why choose? Use both. That's what I do. So let's talk a little bit about option one and how that works. And that's converting your existing CD music files to MP3. Now you don't have to do every CD you own uh, if, if you think that's too big a job, but certainly start with the ones that you like and see how that works out for you. Now there's several CD ripping programs available to download for Windows computers. And despite its age, my choice continues to be Windows Media Player. It's called version 12. Uh, mainly because it's very simple to use, it's easy to use, and it comes preloaded with Windows 10, so it's free. Now, Apple users uh, and, and Windows users, too, can use app, the Apple product iTunes. Even though that's been officially retired, iTunes is still available to download and use on your computers. Now, ripping CDs, the first thing you're going to need is a, an optical drive. And many of us now own newer laptop computers uh, they're so thin, they don't have room for an optical drive. But the good news is inexpensive portable units that plug into a USB connection, just like the one I'm showing here, are readily available. So how do we rip a CD using Windows Media Player? Well, there's many YouTube videos that provide the visual instructions and narration to help you understand the process of ripping a music compact disc to your computer. I'm going to just, all you have to do is type the words into the YouTube search box, RIP CD, Windows Media Player, and up will come many, many choices. But if a picture is worth a thousand words, then a video must be worth a lot more. So I'm going to be talking about the steps that we take to RIP a CD, and then I'll show you a short video clip as well, uh, confirming some of that information. So you insert the disk in the optical drive. Uh, Windows Media Player should open up automatically. If it doesn't, then you just need to go uh, to your start menu and uh, type in the Windows Media Player words and it'll pop up. And when it does, it goes out to a, a database and brings back for you the album information and the list of all the tracks. And if you don't see that information right away, uh, there's a square box that normally contains the album art. If you uh, right click on that and click on the words update album info, that should retrieve this metadata for you from the online database. Now, it completely defeats the purpose of Windows Media Player or any uh, uh, device that you're using to rip CDs if you don't get the actual information. If it shows up as track one, track two, or unknown artist, uh, that's not really gonna be very useful on your computer. Now, uh, it's particularly helpful the, having the computer organize your songs if you have many compilation CDs like I do. Most of us can remember the CDs we have by one particular artist, but can you really remember all the songs that might be on a compilation CD? So anyway, and they, it's good to know that that information retrieved from an online database, if you don't like the way it might be worded, that can be easily edited. So once you uh, have Windows Media Player and the disk in the optical drive, uh, you're gonna click on a drop-down arrow next to the words RIP settings to make some choices. And uh, for format, you should make sure that MP3 is selected. It gives you some other formats, which I'll talk about in this section, but MP3 is, is certainly the most versatile. And for audio quality, I typically choose uh, the best quality and that shows up as 320 kilobytes per second. Uh, there's a check mark which you can or choose to have or not where it says rip CD automatically. I leave that unchecked as I want to really control when the ripping begins. But I do leave a check mark next to the words eject CD after ripping. That way I can easily tell when the process is completed. And then you clip click on the words RIP CD, and the process begins with the result being your music will be saved to the music library or folder on your computer, 
with the ability to play the songs using Windows Media Player or the other music app that's built into Windows 10 called Groove. And uh, also, the, here's the most important part. Once those songs are on your computer, now you have the ability to copy them to other devices like a flash drive or a micro SD card. So I'm going to show this first clip uh, ripping, a, and it's going to repeat some of the information I just provided, but it's going to actually give you a visual. Okay, folks, here we are. I've inserted the uh, CD into the uh, computer's optical drive. Uh, Windows Media Player was, uh, opens up and it's showing me here the Age of Miracles by Mary Chapin Carpenter, the name of the CD. They, they consider it contemporary folk and even tell us the year it was released, 2009. And here's the 12 tracks that are on the CD. So what we're gonna do is rip these. That's the term we use for copying the tracks from the actual CD itself to our music library on our computer. But the first thing we want to do is make sure that the RIP settings are what we like them to be. So up here is RIP settings. I click on the drop down arrow and the first category is format. And it lists several formats. Uh, the first four we can disregard. They're all Windows media type formats. And then the last three are lossless. Those are very high quality and they don't play on every kind of device. So the one that's the most flexible is MP3. And that's the one we wanna make sure there's a, a check mark next to. And then the next grouping is the quality. And we have different choices. I always go with the best quality. In this case is 320 kilobytes per second. And I have that one checked. And then we have two more categories to look at. The first one is, do we wanna check next to rip CD automatically. I typically leave that unchecked. Uh, what that means is every time you put a CD in, it'll begin to, to try to rip it. And sometimes I just want to have a CD in the computer to play and listen to. So I leave that unchecked unless I'm going to be doing quite a few CDs in a row. Then if I have it as with a check mark there, that does speed up the process a little bit. And last but not least, I do have a check mark next to eject CD after ripping because that's what allows us to, uh, to visually see that it's done. But for this purpose, I'm gonna actually uncheck that. So I've unchecked it. And uh, now I'm gonna begin the process of ripping. And that simply is clicking on the rip CD button over here that begins the process. You can see that immediately starts ripping the, the first one while all the others are, are pending. And this is pretty much an automatic process. Uh, it might take 30, 35 seconds to uh, rip a four or five minute track. And uh, that that's all right. We're gonna allow it to go through that. I'm gonna just let it continue with ripping the first one here. And then when it starts to begin ripping the second track, I'm going to pause the uh, the video and we're going to well, come back and uh, pick it up in a minute here. So let's it, see it to, to get to get to the first one. It's finished it. It's automatically going to the second one. So at this point, I'm going to just uh, pause. Okay, we're back. As you can see, uh, the entire CD has been ripped to the library. So I'm going to minimize this now because we don't need it open. And instead, I'm going to go to File Explorer. And uh, I'm going to open up my on this PC my music library down here. And sure enough, there's the Mary Chapin Carpenter album in my music library. If I double click on it, there's the Age of Miracles, the title. If I double click on that, there's all 12 titles. So I'm going to actually take this window and move it over to the left here. And then I'm going to open up a new window by clicking on File, Open New Window. And what that does is it opens up a, an exact you know, copy of what, what's originally open. But on this side, I want to actually go down to a flash drive that I've plugged into the computer, a small one, a one gigabyte flash drive that's actually empty right now. And that's the one we're going to use today. So uh, it's just a simple matter of uh, copy and drag and drop to basically copy and paste this information onto the flash drive. So rather than doing them individually, I'm going to go back up one level here and where now it just says the age of miracles. And by me moving the whole folder over, I'm going to move all the tracks over as well. So I click on it, I drag it over 
and it says copy to the flash drive. Okay, I let go. And then it automatically will copy the information. Now, there was 12 tracks and it's showing that it's copying 13. That extra one is probably uh, the what they call the album art. Uh, and again, here's a process that's not taking long at all. We're pretty much almost half done, halfway done through this. And uh, what will be the result is all these songs will be copied over to the flash drive. So almost done. Here we go. Here we go. Look how quick that is. Uh, now, the, the speed depends on your computer. I'm using uh, a new computer I recently got. Uh, it has a very high-end uh, processor, 32 gig of RAM. So this was is pretty fast. Uh, if your computer is not up to those kind of specs, and it may take a little bit longer, but just be patient, it will get done. And now I have on my music library, on the computer, this CD information and if songs, and as well on the flash drive. And if I double click on the, there are the 12 tracks. So uh, we're now going to take this flash drive to the car and see if we can get these songs to play in the car. All right. That's it for now on this. And uh, let me stop the recording here. All right. So before we continue, let me just talk a little bit about YouTube copyright restrictions and how I'm going to make a little bit adjustment going forward with the rest of today's presentation. The next few clips that I had prepared a few weeks back uh, from the CDs I actually own and purchased this isn't stuff I downloaded illegally. This is songs that I purchased. But even in that case, if we were to upload this presentation to the APCUG YouTube channel, as it is, uh, there's a strong possibility that we would receive a copyright strike. And this happens when a copyright owner of the music submits a legal takedown request for using copyright protected content without permission. Now, just like in baseball, three strikes and you're out with YouTube terminating your account and removing all uploaded videos. So obviously we don't want this to happen. So rather than play the audio embedded in the video going forward, I'm gonna provide the narration while the video plays without any sound, meaning without any music. And I hope I can do a reasonably good job on that. Now I have a friend locally who's a professional singer, professional musician. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically reshoot these videos that contain the music and replace them with the songs that my friend has done and on the CDs that he's been selling. And I know he'll be glad to give us permission. And that way I can, we can play these. And then more in particular, when I asked perhaps in the future through the APCUG Speakers Bureau to give this presentation to one of our user groups, uh, they won't have to worry about copyright infringement if they will be uploading to their own YouTube channel. So, I'm going to now make a little change here. I'm going to go to the more button and I'm going to take off share sound and then here we go. And I'm going to have to turn the sound down on my own so I won't hear it, but I'm going to try to then do the narration of this. And let me mention one thing, too. It says in the corner there, a video by Ray Baxter. Uh, that is not true. I, my wife, Carol, is the real videographer in the family. So she's done all the video taking and uh, the nice job of editing. Here we go. All right, so we're we're in the car, as uh, you can see. I had brought the flash drive with me, and I'm going to now plug it into one of the two USB connectors. It doesn't really matter which one that I use, and now it's in the connector. And uh, so the audio is still off on my unit, so I need to turn that on so it pops up. And uh, I need to go to the sources because I have to tell it I'm, I wanted to use that flash drive. And immediately up comes the uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter CD. It's started to play track four. Uh, 
I can easily advance the to the next tra track by tapping the screen. Or in this particular car, uh, there's controls on the steering wheel. And on the steering wheel, they allow me to either advance it forward or backward. And of course, I can change the volume as well as I'm listening to it. So this is, again, all promoting safe driving. The, the, the steering wheel also gives me the opportunity to uh, request the music and request a song. All right, I hope that came through all right. So now, playing rip songs in the car. Now that we know how to use the flash drive, that's for those cars that are equipped with a USB connector. Now, this isn't really new. I had a car from 2008, 12, uh, more than 12 years ago, that had uh, a flat, the ability to play a flash drive. So they've been around for a while. And what I like about it best is, the, as I pointed out on that steering wheel, I could press the button there and I could verbally request the name of a song or an artist. And that, again, uh, improves the safe driving capability because it's hands-free. Now, playing songs from the smartphone, that's going to be the next topic we're going to talk about. Smartphones with songs saved on an external storage. Now, many Android smartphones allow for micro SD cards to be added. And they're making micro SD cards today that can hold as much as one terabyte of music files. Now, how much is one terabyte of music files? Well, assuming that an average song is about five megabytes, a one terabyte micro SD card could fit approximately 200,000 of your favorite songs. That's over 17,000 hours of music. And if you convert that, that's just under two years of playing time. So uh, it, if you're going to copy the songs to an SD card that you're going to have on your smartphone, it's best to do it when the card is directly connected to your computer uh, using a, an adapter, uh, since using a cable connected to the smartphone is a, is a much longer and slower process. Now, iPhones don't accept the micro SD cards. Uh, they don't allow them. Uh, so you don't have that opportunity to get additional storage. So if you have music on an iPhone, it needs to be saved on the internal storage, thus taking up space that may be needed for other apps and system programs. Now in this situation, for those folks that are committed to the Apple ecosystem, believe it or not, the long running iPod Touch, I don't even remember the year it came out, but it was back in you know, the early 2000s, that's still around. They've updated it as recently as 2019, so that would be an excellent choice to use as, as a music playing device. Or you can just get a regular old MP3 player. Yes, they were very popular before the advent of the feature in smartphones, but MP3 players are still available to purchase. So now we have to get the sound from your device to the car's speakers. And Bluetooth is the preferred way these days. You need to pair your device, your phone, with the car stereo head unit to play the music wirelessly via Bluetooth. Now pairing isn't difficult, but the procedure between different auto manufacturers does differ. So it's not, I'm not able to really show you how many ways you can do it. But uh, YouTube again has many different uh, videos that will show this. And if they don't work, uh, just the next time you bring the car into the car dealer, I think they, you know, they would be happy to show you how you can pair your phone to the head unit in the car. And the other way if, uh, is some many cars still have the audio jack, where the audio jack that is typically used with wired headphones on the device, but that you can use to then connect it to the cars that have that type of connection. And believe it or not, they still make what's called FM transmitters. And I'll show you a little bit more about that uh, towards the end, it, but it's a device that you can plug into the DC power slot, and then you can play the music from that device to an unused FM station on the car's radio. So there's pretty much a way to get around any obstacle you might have in getting the music from your device uh, to, to your car speakers. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about, uh, about this one, about Bluetooth from your phone to your car speakers. All right, so there's my uh, Android phone that I'm, I'm showing in the car. And uh, I have my head unit on. And um, 
probably telling you that I use an app on this particular phone called Music Olay. That's the one that, that I like. It uh, is a, very fast. It doesn't matter how many songs I have on it. It, it comes back and, and quickly through, I can search by voice and it'll bring back uh, the, the, the responses to my request. So uh, I believe here I'm going to put in uh, and say something like, say an artist, Elvis Presley. You may have heard of Elvis Presley. And uh, bingo, comes out of all the different songs I have by Elvis that are stored on the SD card in this phone. It's not a one terabyte, but it is still pretty large. And I'm going to end up with probably All Shook Up. So I just tap on All Shook Up. It shows the album art that came with the CD that I ripped on the phone. And uh, it's starting to, to play, but I'm not hearing it in the car. And I say, well, why is that? It's on. And then I take a look at my dashboard there and realize I haven't changed the source yet. The source is still showing the, the USB. So now I change it to my phone and bingo immediately up comes the song playing it's playing loud the same album art is there on my screen that's on my phone but instead of it coming out of the tiny speakers on the phone the music is now playing through the the good speakers in the car and just like before i can advance to the next song here just by pressing the up button there it went to another elvis album uh this one is the song the peggy lee song fever uh, Little Willie John did that also, and uh, it's playing that song. So you have the ability uh, using the phone connected via Bluetooth, still using the controls on the steering wheel to change your songs and to change the volume. Okay, now we're up to option two. And this is going to be using a streaming service. You don't want to go to the trouble to convert and rip all your CDs. Let's just go with a streaming service. Now, most of them provide two choices. They'll give you the free service, but there you get a lot of ads and you really can't tell them the exact songs you want to hear. Uh, choice two is to pay a, a, a fee. That's about $10 a month. And now you can choose the songs and the artists you want to hear. Now, the, the leaders in this field would be Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, and Amazon Prime. Now, for those already paying for Amazon Prime, this is certainly, it's an included benefit. So this would be the, you should be a first choice. See if that provides uh, what you're looking for. Now, Amazon does have a premium pay service. So they, they often will uh, try to push this on you in their app. It's called Amazon Music Unlimited, and that has many more song choices. But for me, I found that the Amazon Prime works just fine. So now let's see how that works with streaming a service in your car. So I'm assuming that there's no music saved on my phone, but I do have the streaming service. So on this phone, again, I have the Amazon app, Prime app, I tap on that. And up comes, now in this case, rather than searching, I'm gonna just go with what was already there. I had uh, some different songs I was listening to and there's the Righteous Brothers. Uh, so rather than search, I could search, but I'm gonna just tap on, on the Righteous Brothers and see what happens there. And uh, getting it set up, it's not playing yet. And uh, oh, there it is. And look on the screen, immediately it's showing the Righteous Brothers. Unchained Melody is playing, and again, not coming out of the tiny speakers in the phone, but the good speakers in the car. And as you compare the phone screen and the dashboard screen, you can see it's uh, they're playing it. So again, I'm using a streaming service. There's nothing saved on the phone, but with that streaming service, once again, I can use the controls on the steering wheel to advance to the next track. And as quickly as I do it, and it happens on the phone, it happens simultaneously on my dash. Now let's say the car does not have Bluetooth. What can we do then? So this is my wife's car and it uh, does not have Bluetooth, a couple of years older, but uh, what we're gonna do is take the phone in this car anyway and uh, have it set up in a, in a little holder 
and I have it connected analog, you might say, with a, the earphone jack cord coming out of the phone, and you can't really see it, but under the dash there is the audio input plug for the car. So again, I bring up uh, Elvis, and uh, here's a song, that one of his big hits called Tell Me Why that I, I like. And we, I start to play it, and I'm noticing that the sound really isn't coming out, and I turn up the volume, and it's still not really where I want it. And then, of course, I remember that here you have to keep in mind that there's two volume controls. So I want to bring the volume control on the phone all the way up to, to its highest level. And then I'll control the actual sound that we'll hear in the car with the controls on the dashboard. And so I, I make that adjustment there. And uh, now the sound is coming out at the, the sound I like. And uh, so nothing can will work on the steering wheel, but the phone now is close enough to my arms as if I'm driving where I can just tap on the phone screen to, uh, to, to advance the, the, the music. Now this particular, I have a holder there and this car doesn't have a lot of uh, vents in the front there, but so I picked up this little holder and it doesn't really go, it goes only a 16th of an inch or so, just in the lip into the insert where you normally put the, the actual optical CD and then it holds it there. So it's, as I said, it's nicely within, within arm's reach. I can make the different changes. And as I do that, then it, it comes out through the, uh, the, the good car speakers. You also have the holders that go into the grills as well. So you have a lot of choices. There's even one that is now for the, uh, the cup holder where you can put your phone. So I talked a little bit about this before. This might be for cars that don't have the audio input plug. So it's called an, an FM transmitter. And these have been around for a while, but the ones today are so much better than the ones from 20 years ago because uh, the, the electronics is so much better. So it plugs into the DC power outlet of your vehicle. And then you attach to the audio cable between the external speaker jack on the FM transmitter and whatever device you're gonna be using to play the music. It might be your cell phone, like I showed before. It could be a portable CD player that's battery operated that you've chosen to bring along with you. And uh, now this, this particular FM transmitter, uh, it, you could also has slots for USB and SD cards. So you can have your music saved on those and plug them right into that FM transmitter. And then you configure the FM transmitter to send the audio sound to a not in use FM radio station. And then you listen to your music on that radio station on your car's FM radio. Other options. Now, there are other options to connect your smartphone to your auto. These I had never used, but you know I've read a little bit about it and I'll give you a glimpse and you can look into them uh, depending on what kind of uh, smartphone you may have. There's, there's Android Auto, that's a mobile app and allows features from your Android phone to appear on the car's compatible entertainment head unit. And it's all voice operated. Again, works primarily on later model cars from about 2017 on. And then Apple has its own one called Apple CarPlay. It's an iOS software, and that runs from a connected iPhone, provides a variety of audio features, and again, works on car models 2016 and later. So not all cars. So you have to make sure the vehicle you have is compatible here. And there's something called Amazon Echo Auto, and that adds the Alexa app. Imagine in your car, if you said Alexa at the wrong time and all of a sudden it started responding. Anyway, it, it adds that app uh, on your phone to your car via Bluetooth or a wired connection. So you can have so much more than just music with all that the Echo devices offer. Again, not compatible with all cars or smartphones. And remember when you're connected, you're using your cell phone carrier's monthly data plan. Now, Wi-Fi in the car, I added this particular couple of slides here. Thank you, Bill James who's helping me tremendously today with this presentation. He gave me this suggestion. So here we go. Imagine this situation. You're sitting in the back seat are your young grandkids, or maybe they're your great grandkids, who you are taking on a long road trip. And you really don't want to hear constantly those famous words, are we there yet? What's the solution? Wi-Fi in the car. So they can connect their tablets and online games along with the all important headphones during the trip. 
So here's how you do Wi-Fi in the car. You have a few options. Uh, the first one is use your existing smartphone as a wireless hotspot. The pro is there's no extra out-of-pocket cost involved. But the negative is you're using your monthly data allotment, and some phones are unable to accept phone calls coming in when they're being used as a hotspot. And then you can get a dedicated mobile hotspot. And uh, so they sell uh, the, the cellular dongles that would plug into a USB connection in the car, and that would provide the, the uh, ability to connect wirelessly to a hotspot. Uh, and then there's self-contained dedicated mobile hotspots. An exa good example is Verizon's MiFi. It's battery operated, so and it can, or it can be plugged into the car's DC power, and it has portability. So even if you're away from the car, you can still have connections to uh, the, the internet. And some providers offer this service with unlimited data. And then last but not least is the install the permanent wireless modem and router. That's pretty uh, reliable. It's also pretty expensive. Uh, the only way I would consider that is if I was buying a brand new car, I might consider purchasing that as an add-on and have one installed. So that's called Wi-Fi in the car. So music formats will continue to change. One certainty with technology is that it's always evolving. We all need to evolve with it, otherwise get left behind. So that's the end of this presentation. I appreciate everybody's attention and I'm happy to accept uh, questions if there are any. Thanks, Ray. <clears throat> there are some questions that um, I'd like to share with you. Okay. Throw we'll through these. Um, the first one uh, is, I can burn MP3s to CD to play in the car, but I find if they want, weren't aren't 128 uh, bits per second, they won't play. And he thinks it's probably an issue with his CD player. Uh, I, I think he's right. Cause, and uh, why that would happen, I don't know. But uh, most uh, all this car CD player that I've had over the years, no matter what how i formatted them or what the rate was uh they all seem to play in fact there there's something called a you know we all do what's called audio discs when we create it which is an exact copy of a compact disc that you that would be store-bought but we all have the ability with windows media player to create what's called a, a data disc so if you ever look at a blank disc it gives you two quantities it says it's up to 80 minutes of time which is true and it also says that it's up to 700 megabytes of data. So if you create a data disk and there is an option in Windows Media Player, you can fit, I fit easily over 100 songs on one disk and car CD players have been able to play them for, for years. They've been able to play them when the CD player in the house couldn't. So uh, I, I think he's right. I think it is something with the actual player itself. Um would it be possible for him to change the uh, bit rate to something lower and try that? I I don't I I don't know that you can in Windows Media Player offhand. I'd, I'd have to look at that. Um, if you want to leave that as a question for me to get back to that person, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, I'll I'll include that. And one other question, uh, right? You mentioned Windows Media Player. Uh, can you tell us where to find the Windows Media Player? Yes, as, as I mentioned in the presentation, it's included in Windows 10. So if you've never used it before, uh, when you uh, in, the, in the search box in the lower left-hand corner on the Windows 10 screen, just start to type the words Windows Media, and before you finish the word media, it'll show up in the upper portion of the screen, and then you just give it a left click, and all of a sudden it'll open. Now, if you've never used it, it's gonna ask you for to make some uh, settings. And all you have to do is click the, I forget what it exactly says, but it just says, whatever the normal settings are, that's all right. Click on that, click okay, and it'll open up and uh, there you have it. But if you've never used it before, it, 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 you need to actually find it first and, and open it that way. Okay. And uh, it's also the place where it actually lives is in Windows accessories. So if you've not gone to that area of your Windows 10 computer, uh, look under W and you'll see Windows accessories, open Windows accessories and scroll down 
and you will find the Windows Media Player. The other question is, um, any thoughts on making cassette music available or is it too tedious and not worthwhile because they're not digital? I, the, the latter. C cassettes are, if you have just music on the cassette, uh, it's not worth the time or effort to, to try to change it. Yes, there are ways you can do it, but the, the quality isn't good. They've been around for probably 30 or 40 years. So I can tell you that the tape has started to deteriorate. So if it's just music, uh, either, you know, replace it digitally or do streaming, uh, it's not worth it. Now, on the other hand, if you have cassettes like I do, as an example, I was on the radio a few times being interviewed and those were recorded on cassette or I have a, a cassette that had, uh, maybe you have a cassette that has uh, a person who's since uh, uh, passed on, but you know, their voice talking about something. Those are priceless. Those you really want to keep. And uh, there is a, a unit, I show this in my other presentation about how technology has changed the way we listen to music. And I have actually this uh, player, it's a cassette player, looks like a very small one. On one side of it, it shows where you would, you know, insert the cassette and have all the normal controls for stop, pause, fast forward, reverse. But when you flip it over, then you can see there's a spot where you can actually insert a USB stick. And then on the other side, you have controls. So when you're playing the cassette in the player, it's automatically recording that as an MP3 file on that USB stick. And once it's on the USB stick, then you put it into your computer and you can copy it to wherever you like and you've saved that priceless recording. Thank you, Ryan. What would be uh, the other, if there's a, uh, if you want to edit uh, an MP3, uh, data, what would be the best editing software to do that? Well, we, we had a program today. Uh, it didn't get recovered as much as uh, we ran out of time, unfortunately, but it's Audacity, or A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. Audacity is a free program. It's open source. Uh, and when you open it up, it looks pretty complicated for all the different features that are built in. But actually, it's, it's not that difficult at all. I use it as an example. There are sometimes I will take a record album and uh, you play it so the music gets goes from the, uh, the album to my computer. I have a turntable with a USB plug on the end of it. And so as I play an LP, I can record it on my computer. But when it's recorded on the computer, I have, let's say it's six songs on each side. I now have 12, I, I actually, I, I have them all recorded, but it's one long file or it might be two files the time I, I turn the disc over. So Audacity gives me the ability to look and see where each song begins and ends. And I can put markers there and then I save them as a individual song. And then I add the name of the song and the name of the artist. And now when I put them on my computer, it's not one long song of several songs each, one long track of several songs each, but it's individual tracks. So that's one of the ways I use Audacity. And there's lots and lots of material, whether it be YouTube videos or an actually the, when you download Audacity, they give you a manual who ever heard of that in these days? But you actually get a manual giving you all the information that you can use. What about, um, uh, uh, there's another comment here, and I may have misinterpreted my the, the question I ask. He says, a great free program to edit the meta, metadata or tags in MP3 files is MP3 tag. My question is, why would I want to edit the, meta, the metadata? Good question. And I, I know of that program, but although I haven't used it, but sometimes there's mistakes. Uh, I can think of it several cases where there's actually a mistake. Uh, one was uh, a, a song by Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, and the metadata from Rhino Records actually shows the name of the band instead of the name of the, the, the vocal group that performed it. So every once in a while, you might find a mistake. And if you do, then this is the ability you have to go in and correct it. So it'll be something to more to your liking. And uh, 
Another question is, can you copy audio books from CDs to the computer and then play them in the car? Uh, I don't, in general, no. There's sites like, uh, auto, what is it? Audible, audio book. Uh, yeah. Audio book. Um, well, yeah. They um, do it in their own format. It's not MP3. It's one that is very difficult. I don't even know if you can copy it because, uh, you know, they, they don't want, in that case, you maybe borrowing it from the library, copying it, and then playing it. So the, the only one I'm familiar with is the Amazon uh and this might be different. I'm thinking of the Amazon Audible feature. Uh, audio books, I would say if they are in MP3 format, you can certainly copy them just like you could a, a music CD. And the other thing, uh, what was the name of the Android program in the car? Music Olay, M-U-S-I-C-O-L-E-T, Music okay. Olay. And then there's another comment about, um, I'm using Amazon Echo Auto with Android phone and Bluetooth uh, slash FM transmitter in an older car, and it works great. All are controlled due to Alexa. Good to know. Good to know. And then uh, do you use data allotment when listening to music through your phone in the car? And they say probably yes for music streaming. Probably no if it's on your phone. Please that, confirm. That that is correct. If it's on your phone, it's music you own that you place there, and so there's no no data involved. If you're streaming, yes. Now I've talked to some people at Verizon, to different people over the years, and they tell me that while you're using data, it's not a lot. Now maybe they're just saying that, but that would be you know something worthwhile to look on the internet and see if you can find somebody who's actually done studies where they can give you a, an answer. But uh, in, unless you have a very low data that you're going to go over, I don't think it'll be a problem at all. Oh, here's a good question, Ray. It's not really pertaining to uh, music and cars, but I, it will translate to that because uh, it has to do with how do you eliminate pops and snaps on vital LPs? Most of the programs, and Audacity is one. There's another one called SoundForge that actually, when I bought a, a Sony turntable, it came with this software. And they actually, within them, have the ability that when you're transposing it from the vinyl to the MP3, it'll ask you, do you want us to use this, this kind of software that'll eliminate the pops and cracks? I kind of like them sometimes, so I don't, <laughs> half the time I don't use that. But th those are usually built into the audio programs that when you're making a, a conversion from a vinyl LP to digital. And Ray, I've um, seen programs on the internet, in fact, I've used it, where you can actually uh, convert a YouTube video to audio. Are you familiar with any of those programs and uh, do you have any uh, recommendations? Uh, yes, there, there are, um, there used to be a lot of them and YouTube in the last several years has, has been able to, to pull them down by either changing things on their end and a lot of them don't work. But uh, 